Welcome back, lady listeners. Hey, lady listeners. Welcome. It's Alexa Raleigh week. Woo! And we got a book. You guys are probably like, are we going to get this fucking book? Because we never even yeah. talked about the couple. I know. <laughs> but we alluded to the guy. I know. And Craven? Craven oh. Cove, yeah. Yes. Okay. It's, it's, all right. Uh, the book today is called Shy Virgin. And we originally weren't going to play anything this week. We were going to take a two-week break, the two weeks, uh, Thanksgiving and the week before. We just had them blocked out. And we're like, you know what? Let's just keep them out. And then the closer we got, we were like, you know what? Let's just let's just put this up. Like, it's a short book. It's like 10,000 words, I think. And so it's going to go in the bundle. So if you don't want to wait on the second half, you can, I think it should be live today. Yeah, we're sure. grab the bundle, the Craven Cove bundle, and there's it'll be four books and one. So, yep. and it'll be on sale for I think for is it that what we do with that one? Yeah, usually it'll be two ninety nine. Yeah, for a limited time, and then the price will go up. Yeah, but um, yeah. So this this guy, like, uh, if you read the Craven Cove series, it's the one where it had um, prom king, prom queen, and then it had the mom and dad take it all. And so the whole time you're reading this story through all three of those books, sure you, shut Siri just like back talk to me on my watch right now. She's got an Irish accent too. And so I feel like it's Eagle yelling at me. Like when it goes uh -huh. off, he's like, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm like, fuck you, Eagle. Sorry. She's listening. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, so yeah, if you if you read Prom Queen, Prom King, take it all, the whole series, you're hearing about this kid named Shaw, and he's like in high school with them, and he's like, you don't understand like totally what his role is. At first, you think he's like this really manipulative asshole who's like trying to break them up, yeah. and then like this sort of kind of left on a cliffhanger after Prom King, and then take it all, like more of his past gets revealed, and you're like, oh shit, like who's his mom and all this stuff. So like, it kind of goes a little crazy. So, so this was a fun way. So his story sort of gets explained and take it all, but you don't have to have read those before this. And so if you haven't read those, you can listen to this. this is yeah. You just get his backstory of like growing up. You don't get like his romance. That's what, yeah. That's like yeah. a completely different book. Mm -hmm. So we decided he needed his happily ever after. So that's what uh, this book is about today. So Yeah. And we're super excited. And it's great when it's our week. Like, I can't stress enough the little so preparation we do. <laughs> yeah. We just like don't when we do sat shit. down to record, I was like, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I'm like, yeah, sit, hit record. Let's do it. <laughs> it was a hit record, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> it was one of those moments. So we haven't talked in like a couple of weeks because. Like we pre-recorded a couple of oh, things because right. you had like went out of town. So I feel like I have so much to catch up on. First of all, I made a note because I went to Costco for the first time. And like I, I sort of I mentioned that on the last episode. I was like, I'm going to Costco for the first time. It was incredible. Like my friend, he added, he has like a business account. He added me to it. So I have a, I have a membership now. It that. was like, I said, I've, I'm convinced this is a multi-level marketing scheme and you like, you got to bring people in. <laughs> so <that's> what, <laughs> you got to bring people I in. Know. So I keep calling him my upline when I call him to tell him about deals. I got to go. Go. I'm like, yes, I'd like to speak with my upline, please. <laughs> oh my God. I, I said, let me discuss my downline options. <laughs> like, it's been great. So, but it was, it was super amazing. I loved it. It's I was happy that they had samples out for you. I was like, she's not going to get the full experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they did. They had like maybe four or five. So that was cool. Mm -hmm. I was excited. I, I was not and mad you went, at like it. through the week. Can you yeah, imagine? Yeah, it was, a, like, it was a Monday. Uh-huh. When I went, it was a Monday. You're like, but, samples um, on a Monday? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen, so I went, the first one I went to, I went to two Costco's. The first one I went to. My friend was like, oh, this one isn't really nice. Like he says, it's kind of older, but I think it was probably the first one in Charlotte. 
Yeah. So because it's like in a in a big major area. And then there's another one that's in Matthews that is a lot nicer. And so I went to that one like the next week. And it is. It's much nicer. It's newer. I was like, okay, this is way different than the other one. <laughs> the other one was like a warehouse. <laughs> yeah. But this one was actually really nice. But no, it was a fun experience. It's really fun like to go through and see it and stuff. And I got uh, several things that I've been really happy with. Especially like the, there's a couple of things for like quick dinners. Mm -hmm. Like, um, there's like this chicken and mozzarella ravioli and they had like the sauce right next to it. And so I just got it. I was like, oh, we'll try it. My kids love ravioli. And, um, and it was really basic chicken and mozzarella cheese. I was like, okay, they like both of those things. Mm -hmm. And so it was a really quick weeknight meal that wasn't fast food. Yeah. And so that's why I was like, I'm not angry at Costco. <laughs> so I've been able to do that several times with them that I've gotten things that it was just for a quick dinner during the week. And it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was terrible, you know? So yeah, that's nice. So that was my Costco update. <laughs> I didn't know to mention Did they have that. flowers? Yes, they did. They had one. I didn't look at the second place, but the first place I went, they had a big section of it. And I liked that it was like blocked off mm -hmm. that it wasn't just out for people to like brush by and hit and yeah. stuff. It was like in its own little stand. I appreciated that. And they were really pretty too. I got so. our flowers when we did that everything for her in yeah. my town from there. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you went there for it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah like they were had, they, I could, I could, we could do a whole podcast on Costco. <laughs> I started following people on TikTok that go to Costco every week and post the deals and stuff. This is how bad I it love is. that. It's thankfully it's an hour away from me. So I have to make a special trip to go. Yeah. So it's not accessible. If it was right down the road, it that this would be, be a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um this past weekend I had the Alexa Riley book signing. And it looked like you had a good turnout. It was. So yeah, I pulled up um the numbers like from the from the books I brought and the books that you sent. And they had a store, I think, I think they, I think we sold like 200 books, Damn. which is awesome. I mean, a lot of people, there was like four people that bought every single book, like one of everything. Yeah. And that was like, I think it was 30, 30 books. Jesus. So four people bought 30 books in one bundle. And I was just like. Holy shit. <laughs> like, I couldn't believe it when they did these? it. I know. I know. But I mean, so there was probably, there was at least 150 people there because most people bought like just like two, you know? Yeah. So that yeah. was, it was insane. But it was, it was Was it so, nice to get back out into like the book world a little bit? It was incredible. I, and I didn't realize it until I started talking to people and I was, and I realized I don't have anybody to talk to about this stuff where I mean I, I, I know I do like I'm mean, obviously I can message you or yeah. you know post up and read me romance but to sit down with somebody and be like oh, you know and as I was signing the book and you know how it is like when we sign like I always do like an inscription and stuff and mm -hmm. like we try to take a moment to ask them questions and make it a moment you know yeah I mean especially people who wait to see us and it's like some people one person drove eight hours that was the furthest away there were three people and they came from Ohio most people came like three and four hours away. Damn. I mean, like it was insane how far people came. So I was just like, you drove all this way. Let's have a moment together. For sure. And so like, as I was doing the inscription, I would just ask them like, well, what was the last romance she read? And most people were like, your book, you just came out <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you can't say Alexa Riley. What was the last romance book you read? And I was like, oh, who are some of your favorite authors? And some people would offer up, like, you know, they would say different names. And I'd be like, yeah, I know her. She's one of our best friends. Yep, we know her, too. Yep, we know her, <laughs> you know. And then somebody actually mentioned they had just finished the Lisa Renee Jones book. And I was like, you know what? I was like, we had dinner with her one night. And I said, I thought she was a fantastic person to have dinner with. I said, because she was very knowledgeable. Yeah. She offered up everything at the table. Like she was giving out advice. And I said, someone who has been doing this for so many decades, a very seasoned author, it was so willing to help. So willing to offer advice and just a pleasure to be around. I was like, she was genuinely better than I thought she would be in person. Like blew yeah. my expectations out of the water. And then somebody else said she was like, well, she was like, well, that's good. But she said, I didn't have that experience with such and such. And she named another author where she was like, she said she acted like she couldn't get rid of us fast enough. And I was like, 
well, maybe she had anxiety. Like, I didn't know who it yeah, was. I try I, to give people like, the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. You, you yeah. don't know. Some people are anxious. Oh, and they act it is awkward, so overwhelming. Or it's their first signing and they're mm -hmm. overwhelmed by the amount of people. But yeah. I think that is the one thing that was great about going to book signings before I was an author mm -hmm. is I've gotten to a table where I was really excited to see an author uh -huh. and been extremely disappointed. Yeah. yeah. So, and I that's think that's part of why you and I do that is we mm -hmm. always take a moment even when our line is long mm -hmm. yeah so we're yeah. like no everybody's getting a mm -hmm. moment to yeah because yeah. we've been there where it was uh -huh. like well fuck I waited <laughs> forever I've been so excited for this mm -hmm. moment and then and you're it like just... oh just go up and get your book signed and walk away yeah like, no that's not how this works no you waited your turn so that you could have your turn yes like that's how I feel but you're absolutely right I think being on the end of that disappointment made us very diligent to not do that. And so I, I, I hope we some have. Some authors may have not experienced that. Because yeah. when they started going to the book signings, they were already authors. So mm -hmm. the other authors might have recognized them. So they wouldn't have gotten that like yeah. weird moment mm -hmm. with them. Well, so. and some people, I think, too, are just afraid. Like when they get there, they're like, they're afraid they're not going to sell any books. They're afraid they're going to come off awkward. They don't want to be pushy. You know, they like, I think there's probably, I'm, I make a lot of assumptions, but that's what I would assume. Yeah. Is someone in that situation. I mean, great. Like, I don't want to talk shit, but there have been, there have been people who that was not the case and they were still assholes. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and by and large, I think maybe that's just overwhelming, yeah. especially when you're at a book signing for the first time and there's big authors there and they all have lines and lines and lines and there's yeah. nobody at your table like that. That has to feel horrible. You know, like I like that. Seeing that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Where I'm sure. just like, oh, I hope somebody goes over to their table. You know, that kind of thing. How about the fact that Jessa Dean was in Leah's line? Oh, my God. Listen, I could not believe it. She came over. She had her daughter with her. She came over. She sat down and she was like, hi. And I was like, hey, what's up? Like, you want to get some books? Like, I'll sign them for you. She was like, sure, you can sign my books. And like, she was very like knowing about it. Mm -hmm. And I and I had never seen a picture of her. I didn't know what she looked like. Yeah. And so then she said who she was. And I was like, oh, my God. And her daughter. <laughs> Like, it was so fun because her daughter was there and I was like, and I told her, I said, like, you don't understand how this was being on the other side and watching her like just shoot up. And she said, they call it, she was like, they call it something about like May Day or May the 4th or something. She said, cause that's when the episode aired. And she said, that's like our anniversary now when that happens. We always talk about May the 4th is when that Like happened. May the 4th, the day we talked about Jessa Dean or the day she, oh, it she wouldn't have been the day she played cause she just played. Okay. No, no, The day that we talked about her on the podcast, the day okay. it like we, it went live that we talked about her. She was like, yeah, it was May the 4th or whatever. It was the day we like were messaging her and going crazy and all this stuff. <laughs> So I, I love it that she cute. knows the day. I know that she knows the day. And it was, I like, I seriously got so teary eyed because she said, she was like, you have no idea what you've done and what it means to my family. And I was just like, I'm going to cry now. Like saying it because her daughter's there. Her husband's in the car. Her other kids are in the car. All of them drove like almost oh five God. hours. I think she said it was like four and some change. They drove up for this, just for this. They yeah. drove straight up, went to this and went home. And I was just like, I can't believe you did this. And she was just like, she's like, you have no idea what you've done in my life. Oh and I was God. like, I'm going to cry. You're going like, to make me right cry. Now, like right now I'm going to cry. I know. And it just like, it was crazy because it made me feel so good and so happy. But I was still like, I didn't, I said, all we did was talk about you. That's it. You wrote said, the books. I said, you, yeah. I said, you wrote the books. I said, people came back to read more of your books because you write amazing books. Mm -hmm. But you yep. know, but I said, whatever divine intervention called out that day. And I went back through 7,000 emails and clicked on hers and pulled it out of that pile. I said, I don't know how it happened, but it did. And I'm just, it was so cool to like be there with her. It was a real moment. It was great. I'm so I glad that. I got to see her. I, I know. That. I know. It was awesome. Um, another one is um, a lady I've talked to forever. Her name's Karen. She came. She is Melanie Moreland's assistant. Oh, and okay. I have talked to Karen 
hundreds of times yes. because she helped us with like all the swag on the book box. You know, you know how she, she helps us with like all the read me romance stuff. Like, um, how with did she get Moreland, to be like Moreland's assistant. Like, I don't, I don't know. When was the, do people get to what, apply for I was going to say, <laughs> do you want this job? Oh, I'm, I'm here to tell you some shit too. So while she's in line waiting, she hears me talking to the lady in front of me. And I'm like, I just finished my audiobook. I've got that on my list to talk to you about. I've got so much to tell you. So I just finished my audiobook on the way there. And I was like, I'm pissed. I don't have another book to read. And she, when she gets up to the table, it's her turn. She was like, give me your email address. I've got an audio for you. And I was like, okay. Red alert. This fucking book I'm listening to right now. Melanie Moreland's is called The Boss. It yeah. Is oh my God. I just downloaded that. Rochelle just started it and I, I can't. just started too. I cannot. I've got like two hours left. I, I have to tell you this. This is like chapter one. Like chapter one, she witnesses this guy murder somebody in front of her, right in front of her. And he's like, well, I guess we got to get married. <laughs> It's insane. It's insane. It's like, that's the only, this is the only choice I have now is I have to marry you so that you can't tell on me. Oh, I love it. Yes. It is, I mean, Rochelle, we're, that's so funny that this is the book you're talking about. It's so, so, so good. The second book is not supposed to come out till November 11th, but mm -hmm. it's only out now. Like, it's live on Amazon. Well, see, what happens is, or what might have happened is they, audio can be really slow about loading, so the audio might be live, but the ebook book hasn't it. gone. Okay. So they'll connect so, up later, but the audio is out there then, and then you can get it. Well, if you're listening to this, they're both already live on ebook. They're in KU. Go get them. It is, it's just, it's Alexa shit. It is over the top, insane, dirty hot. Like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I can't wait for you to read this book. Oh, my God. You have to tell me. Like, as you okay. read it, you have to tell me, like, how crazy this book is. God, it's so good. And so, like, I'm listening to it the whole time. I'm like, I can't fucking wait until I'm done with this book. And I'm going to message Karen and be like, home run. 100% home run. I love it. I know. So yeah, she now sent I'm it even to more me. more excited. God damn it. It's like Monday. I don't have time to read this book. There's I so know. much going on this week for me. I know. I know. My kids are out like the second half of this week too for like Veterans Day and shit. They're off Thursday and Friday. I'm like, I've got all this crap to do. I've got a huge laundry list of shit. And I'm like, all I want to do is read this book. <laughs> it's so good. All right. I'm going to oh. read, it. I'm gonna oh read it and report back. It's The Boss by Melanie Moreland, and it's book one. Hold on. I It'll it be in the show here. notes. Yes. It's book one in Ma The Men I of Hidden Justice. I think you have a about Moreland, too, because she writes The Baby or The Contract, which isn't even technically a safe book because mm -hmm. she's his boss for a while. Yeah. It's like one of the best books I've ever read. Or maybe it is safe. I can't remember. But like I said, I look it back. It doesn't matter. That's the first book I read, <laughs> and I fell madly in love with her. Mm -hmm. Like. I was like, this is awesome. I'm telling you, this this book, The Boss, it is it. It is it. Like and I cannot has... stress enough, lady listeners, you need, like, I don't even care if I knew Melanie Moreland. Like, this is not a sponsored ad. You have to read this fucking book. And then book. she has the best epilogue I've ever read in a book, in a book called um, It Started With a Kiss. Yes, that's the one. You have a signed copy of that, don't you? Yeah, I think we got it that. Is yeah, yeah. The hands down best epilogue, epilogues I've ever read in a series. Like I, I was like, I can't. <laughs> so oh, this book, God. I'm telling this okay. book is so ridiculous. You got like I want. I cannot wait to see what you think about it. But the opening chapter, I was just like. This this is the best book ever. <laughs> like I was immediately in this. I was even laughing as I'm listening to it because I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> but the other great book that I read, I've like, I've, I don't know what's happened, but I've hit the lottery with books lately. The past three audiobooks I've had have been so good. I hopped from New Species to this, so it's just been hit after hit. But um, that's good considering coming off a series like that. No shit, right? Yeah. So before the boss by Melanie Moreland, I read or I listened to, um, oh gosh, what's the name of it? It's not an audible. Um, shit. What, oh, okay. I got it on audiobooks, which is an app that I like that's 
Jessica Clare wrote a Christmas cowboy book and she sent me a code for it. She was like, here, you, my publisher sent me like free downloads if you want one. She's like, I know you love audios and I don't know what to do with them. I'm like, okay, I'll take care of that. And so <laughs> I downloaded it, but it was to this other app and it's called Audiobooks. I've never used the app before, but it was pretty easy to, to figure out. But it's called Holly Jolly Cowboy. And I wasn't sure I was going to like it. I even messaged you and I was like, this hero is such a dick. I don't know how he's going to come back. And it's like, it's inspired by the Great British Baking Show. So this girl is baking like cooks and cake, like cake, cooking cakes and cookies and stuff. And I just couldn't, I was so hungry the whole time I read it. I didn't it. believe you when you said it. I was like, this is Jessica Claire. She got this. <laughs> I know. And so this guy was such a dick. Like it happens kind of in the beginning, a little bit of spoil if you want to fast forward, if you don't want to know anything about it, but um, it's not integral to the ending, but um, she bakes a cake for this competition in town and all the like surrounding judge, all the judges are people from the surrounding towns that own bakeries. And she's trying to get them to like buy her cakes and stuff for business because she needs the money really bad. And so he doesn't know that that's what the cake's for. And he puts salt in the icing on it, like fucks with it, like, like totally fucks up the icing. And he doesn't know. And she takes it to this competition and they like basically make fun of her about it. And he's so mean about it. And like, because he's like, he's mad because she made him peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all week. Like she was supposed to be cooking for him all week and he was a dick and she was like, all right. And so she made him peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all week. Meanwhile, the guy that he's working with is getting like steak sandwiches and hot soups and homemade cookies and he's pissed. So he goes in and fucks her cake up. And I was so mad. I was like, this is the meanest thing ever. She's poor. <laughs> what is he cool. like when he, he came finds through. out what he did? Like when he realizes it. So what is he like when he realizes it? Like yeah, when, when he, he realizes why she needed the money. Oh, he's like, he, he turns the beat around. And so at the end of it, it's obviously the grovel's really good. Like what he does in the end made it okay. Where I was like, you know what? He realizes that he really fucked up and he did everything to make it right. And so I was like, okay. So that was made he me all, good. Was he just mad because she was making other food and he was jealous? Yes, he was jealous. He was like <laughs> acting like a baby. He was so jealous. He was like, because he just pulled attitude and she was like, all right, I'll just make you peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all week. He's like, fine, whatever. And so she does it. And then he like gets mad. <laughs> But you know, it's Cooking like for other people. That's what I yeah. Was that's exactly. From. He was like really jealous that the the guy that was he was with was getting all her her sweet treats, and he wasn't. <laughs> but the sex in it is so fucking hot because it's a little like enemies to lovers. Yeah. God, it's dirty. There's some good dirty talk in that too. It's Holly Jolly Cowboy by Jessica Clare. And then I remembered when I was listening to it because I li I listened to her other cowboy book last Christmas. And so it's like her men. It's like the, the the series. If you look it up, they're all numbered. But she does a Christmas one in the series every year. And so I read the Christmas one last year and I was like, there was an accountant in that that I wanted to know her story. She was like really nerdy but really cool. And I was like, okay, I want to read hers. So I went back and I found that one and I read that one. And I think that one's the, I think that's the, the bachelor cowboy. Yeah. The bachelor cowboy. That one was so good. It was even better than the Holly Jolly cowboy. And both of those were great. So she is, like I said, she's an accountant, but she has a mother who's a narcissist and like always tries to one up her will embarrass her in public just to like get the attention on herself, like puts her down and this cowboy ain't having it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved how he like supported her and loved her and put the mom in her place. Yeah. Like I loved it that somebody finally like stood up for her, protected her, but yet she also did that for herself. Like she just, she didn't just let him do it. Yeah. She did it for herself too. And it made me love her. And the whole time I'm reading it, I'm picturing like Abby Knox is the heroine because she reminded me so much of her because she's like really quirky, but so sweet and would literally take her shirt off and give it to you if you needed yeah. it. Like just, just gives and gives and gives and such a compassionate person. And so it really reminded me of that. And also, you know, Abby writes like small town, you know, romances and stuff. And it reminded me of that a lot. So 
She actually, I messaged her and I was like, you've got to read this book. And she did. And she messaged me. She was like, oh my God, I love it. You were totally right. This book is amazing. <laughs> like, yep. Yep. So both of those books were home runs too, in, in my opinion. So definitely check both of those out. If, especially if you want a holiday read right now. The Holly Jolly Cowboy was so good. Totally worth it. Totally. Oh my God. What are you reading right now? Are you reading anything? I did read a series. I read a series <clears throat> um, called Daddy Series by Leela Leela Fox. Mm. It was just a bunch of daddy books. Hell yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. I love it. It was well, fun. There was a group of girls. They were quick, easy reads that were really sweet. How many were in it? Was it like a whole box set or in the individual books? They were individuals. I think that was okay. like four or something like that. I love that. I love finding a good daddy book. They're hard to find. <laughs> Do what? They're hard to find. They like, are. It's enjoyable. Sometimes people get a little weird with it. I mean, that's your kink, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it gets a little weird for me. <laughs> no, I get it. Because sometimes it can go like really into age play and stuff. And it's like, I don't mind that, but I just don't want that the entire time. And then book. at the same time, some people can be too politically correct for me. Yes. I mean, I'm yeah. all about being politically correct in mm -hmm. real life. But yeah. But it's like, we don't have to keep, we don't have to keep acknowledging that we're adults in yeah. this. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, come on, let's go. <laughs> you know, it's funny. One of the, oh God, I should mention this too. There was a lady listener. I won't say her name in case she doesn't want me to mention her, but she brought wedding cake I while I was at the table. She brought up four slices of wedding cake and I could not believe it. It was incredible. Then, like, we talk for a while. She's so sweet, so nice. We laugh. She loved wedding cake crashers. That was why she brought it. She knew I loved wedding cake. She gets her husband to come in and take the photo. And she's like, oh, you're going to love this. She's like, he's a lot older than me. And let me tell you, this man was a daddy. Like, full head of silver hair, like, real tall, had like kind of those tan lines around his mm -hmm. eyes where he smiled a lot, like big hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad, <laughs> glad this worked out for you. <laughs> oh, it was the best. It was such a moment. I died. Like and she just giggled because she's like, I know you're going to love this. She's like, let me introduce you to my husband. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. It was great. And she brought me cake. I was like, she's clearly the best. So, yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. I met so many great people. I actually had lunch with three readers afterwards. And we all talked, like, we talked the whole time about books. And and that was so nice. And, like, one of the ladies there, like, has written, it's like writing a book. And so we talked a lot about that. And we just talked about just romance in general. And it was so, so good. I hadn't done that in so long. Yeah. Especially and, in person. Yeah. And it's different when it's like with, I mean, as much as I love my friends and talking about it, but it's nice to hear like a, from somebody different that's fresh and yes. you have no idea what they're going to recommend or what they're going to say. Or it's mm -hmm. just, and you feel like too, like I can be like, oh. <gasps> Yeah, have you heard of blah blah blah? Uh, I like already gushing. said that to you. Yeah, so it's nice. Well, and they were all like, somebody was like, "Well, I just fin finished the Ice Planet Barbarians. I don't even know what to do with myself now." <laughs> and so it was like, it was just fun to laugh about that and be like, yeah. "Oh my god, I know that feeling too." You know? Yeah. So uh, it was just, I don't know. I I loved it. I loved it. There was actually two other authors that I met when I was there. They came together. They wrote up together. And I wanted to mention one of them same. Her name is Opal Fairchild. And the other one is, I believe it's this Anna Fury. And they were both so sweet. They both have, um, I think Opal had just published her first, but maybe Anna had pu published a couple. They brought their books with them and took, they put their books on the shelves and took pictures of their books with other books. Like, and they were like, maybe one day. And so, and then the, the bookstore owner was like, if you ever want to do a signing, let us know. And so like, that was really cool that like, they made that contact and like, maybe they can do a book signing there one day too. So it was just so sweet. And Jenica Snow messaged me and she was like, she's like, bitch, I want to come to that. Like what, you know, tell me next time I'll come down. And I was like, will you sign with me if I do this again? And she mm -hmm. was like, yes, absolutely. 
So I was like, okay, maybe that will entice more people to come. I love her. She's so adorable. She like, I want to put her in my pocket and just keep her there forever. She's so freaking cute and small and sweet. Anna Fury's got some nice looking covers. Hell yes, she does. Oh, so they brought their (laughs) they brought their books in, and I read the dedications, and I got all teary eyed because they had dedicated it to each other, like. It was so Aww. sweet. Yeah, it was like they both mentioned each other in their dedications because they were like, we held each other accountable. We pushed each other to finish these books. Like, we're, you know, we're friends. We've done all this together. So we wanted to come here together. And it was just, it was such a moment. I'm going to put them in the show notes if anybody else wants to check them yeah, out. Yeah, to with check me. out their stuff. I mean, they, they were so cool. And they were, I mean, the Alpha so nice. Awakens, Wake Up Alpha. Yeah. I'm like, like what, what, what about this is bad? Yeah. What happens when this Alpha wakes up? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It killed me. I was like, you have my attention with this book. <laughs> it was great. So. Well, I think we've we've blabbed long enough this time. So let's send them into the first installment of Shy Virgin. And right. we'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye. This is Shy Virgin by Alexa Riley. Read for you by Avi Page. Chapter One. Carrie. Making my way across campus. I'm reminded of how much I love this time of year. The crunch of the leaves beneath my feet and the cool fresh air that's perfect for dresses and boots or sweaters and jeans. Summer is officially gone and fall has settled into place. My last year of college is finally here and I'm ready for the next chapter of my life. I'd been so excited to be here my freshman year and I remember having the same excitement when I started high school. Each time, I think the next step will be different, but I always end up stuck in the same rut. My life is still the exact same. It's just a change in scenery. I'm going to need something bigger, but I have no idea what. I've always heard people find themselves in college, but I'm still a bit lost. My phone starts to vibrate in my back pocket, making my heart drop. Checking the screen, I see the number is unknown, and I ignore it. Since classes have started back, I've been getting these strange calls. At first, it was a few times a week, and I'd answer. No one would respond, but I could always hear heavy breathing on the other end. The frequency started to increase, sometimes in the middle of the night. Still, no one would ever respond, but I knew someone was there. I've stopped answering them altogether, and now the person is calling more and more every day. I usually power off my phone at night, which sucks, but what else can I do? Get a new number? I hate the idea, but the way it's going, I might not have a choice. I've tried to block the calls, but it's not so easy. Before I can put my phone back into my pocket, it starts to ring again. I want to throw the thing, because it's driving me insane. I don't understand why someone is doing something so stupid, and it's beginning to really freak me out. I'm starting to get paranoid. It goes off again, but the vibration in my hand lets me know it's a text. I assume it's Celeste and don't answer it right away. She's invited me over for dinner so many times, but I'm not the best in the kitchen. We live in the same building and have had a few classes together in the past. We became fast friends our freshman year, and if not for her, all my meals would be takeout. Her fiancé, Apollo, can get hung up with working late some nights, so we hang out. I hate going back to my empty condo because it gives me that same empty feeling I had when I was a kid at home alone. It's why in my first year of college I tried a sorority. Even though I had the family name and the money you needed to be there, it wasn't a good fit, and I left. After that, I got my own place. I'd be a liar if I didn't admit to myself that I'm always saying yes to Celeste's dinner invitations because I'm hoping to run into her fiancé's half-brother. I've been crushing on Shy for far too long. Celeste is always inviting him over, too, since Shy lives in the same building as us. I know Apollo's dad owns the whole complex, but he's not Shy's father. He and Apollo are half brothers on their mom's side, but they all seem somewhat close to a degree. Apollo only learned Shy was his half brother a few years ago. When I finally look down at my phone, I smile when I see it's Shy texting me. 
I open it just as I head inside our building. Shy. I'm free now if you want me to check on your sink before dinner. Me. That would be great. I'm always finding reasons to try and get Shy's attention. When I saw the tiny leak that might have only been condensation under my sink, I jumped on texting him about it. He probably thinks I'm a helpless rich girl that can't do anything for myself. Sometimes I would agree with that assessment, because I can't even figure out how to flirt with him. I resorted to finding things wrong at my place to get him to come over. He must handle most of the stuff when it comes to fixing things, because that pretty girl Jamie has the same idea as me. I always see Shy going into her place at the other end of the hallway on my floor. At least I'm hoping that's what's going on. They could be dating, for all I know, and I don't like to think about it. My phone goes off again as I step onto the elevator. I hit the button to my floor over and over, like that makes it go any faster. I don't know how soon Shy will come over, and I'd like to freshen up or something. When the door finally closes, I check my phone again. Unknown. I like you in pink. I stare at the text for a long moment. What the hell? I whisper, looking down at my oversized pink hoodie. Unknown. You'll regret not answering my calls. The elevator chimes, and the doors slide open, making me jump. My phone starts to ring again, but I hit the power button to make it stop. Tossing the phone into my bag, I hurry to find my keys as I rush off the elevator and head straight for my place. It takes me a second to get my keys out, and when I do, I realize the door is unlocked and it pops open easily. I push the door slightly to peek inside with zero intention of actually going in. When it swings open, my alarm isn't going off as it normally does. When I look inside, I can see from where I'm standing that my place has not only been ransacked, but destroyed. Holy fuck, sounds from behind me, making me scream. It's me, Shy says quickly when I spin around and run right into his solid chest. He wraps his arms around me, pulling me close. I've got you. His words are gentle, but his whole body vibrates with rage. Chapter Two Shy. Come on, let's go to my place, I say, wrapping an arm around Carrie. I'm calling the cops. On the way back to my apartment, I call the police and explain what little I know. Carrie doesn't say anything, and when I help her sit on my couch, she's shaking. Let me make you some tea. I try to keep my words soft so I don't scare her, but inside I want to rage. Who the fuck did that to her apartment? Okay. She looks up at me with her big green eyes, and I decide the tea can wait. Come here. Sitting down beside her, I pull her onto my lap and wrap my arms around her. I remember once when I was a kid, my aunt and I were staying with one of her boyfriends, and he'd come home drunk and torn the place apart. I was shaking, just like Carrie is now and I remember thinking I just wanted someone to hold me. She's small in my arms, and I lean back, fitting her under my chin as she curls into a ball. Grabbing the blanket beside me, I drape it over both of us and try to make soothing sounds. It's going to be okay. My hand rubs up and down her back as I hum low, and although she's still shivering, I feel her melt against me. What am I going to do? I can't stay there. You're going to stay with me. She looks up, and I stare down at her. You can have my bed. Shy, I can't. You'll stay here, and that's the end of it, I say. And when a tear slips from her eyes, I want to murder whoever it is that made her so upset. Thank you. She curls against me once more, and I take out my phone. While I hold her, I text Apollo and Rory what happened and that we need the security camera footage. They both text back immediately and are on their way. As soon as that's done, there's a knock on my door and Carrie flinches. It's okay, it's just the police. Just then, Celeste comes bursting through the door and I see the uniformed police officers behind her, 
surprised that she ran right in front of them. Carrie! She beelines straight for where we are on the couch, and reluctantly I let her go. Stay here with Celeste. I'm going to show the cops to your place. She nods silently as I tuck the blankets around her, and Celeste moves in close to her side. This way, I tell the two police officers as I show them to Carrie's door. They both take notes about what time she entered the building, and I tell them I've requested security footage. Then they ask a bunch of questions I don't have answers to. Does she have any enemies? Is there someone you think might have done this? Does she have anything of value missing? I'm irritated that I don't know the exact answers, but I go through the motions knowing they can speak to her after this. I don't suggest she stays here tonight, one of the officers says, and I nod. Already taken care of. Shy. I turn around to see Apollo and his dad Rory coming through the door. Holy shit, Apollo hisses, and I see the flash of anger in his eyes. No doubt he's thinking of his fiancée, Celeste, and how this could have happened to her. She was alone in her apartment all afternoon. Rory goes straight to the officers and speaks to them as I walk over to where Apollo is standing. I don't understand. Apollo shakes his head. Nothing looks like it's been taken. She didn't even have expensive stuff here. Her television was probably the most valuable thing in the whole place, and it's smashed. I know, I agree, clenching my teeth. It looks like someone did this for the fun of it, or to send a message. Or both, Apollo says, and his grave look meets mine. Security cameras? He shakes his head. We're having trouble accessing the drive. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but the last recording was at 10 o'clock this morning. That's her first class, I say absent-mindedly. Do you think she was the sole target? He looks around the room like it has the answers. Just based on the fact that no one else's apartment was broken into, I'd have to say yes. I saw Jamie just before Carrie got home. She was coming out of her apartment and seemed fine. I saw Sam on the first floor when I was running in here. He was good, too. So it was just Carrie? I don't even want to know the answer to that question. Just Carrie, Apollo agrees. I think there's some shit going on here we don't know about. My fists clench at my sides with the thought that she's in danger. When I first met Carrie, I knew there was something sweet and innocent about her. I also knew she came from old money and a family name that rivals the crew's. Rory and Apollo are known not just on the island of Craven Cove, but in most social circles. It's something that intimidated me at first, but now I just keep my distance. We've gotten closer over the past couple of years, but I don't think I'll ever be comfortable in the spotlight. Knowing Carrie came from that same kind of life, I couldn't help but remember my past and how the smell of being poor won't ever truly wash off of me. It is what it is but I grew up in a very different world than the rest of my family. One where you might go to bed hungry, have to sleep in the car to stay safe, or pretend the bruises are from sports and not your aunt's latest meal ticket. Celeste might be the closest to understanding my life, but even she had a mom who protected her, unlike me. Just then the officers come over and ask if they can come back to my place to interview Carrie. I nod as all of us make our way back to my apartment, because I have more than a few questions of my own. Chapter 3 Carrie No ex-boyfriends? The detective asks me again for the fourth time. I shake my head no as my eyes move over to where Shy is sitting. He's finally stopped pacing and taken a seat across from me. He watches me the whole time as I answer the officer's questions. I wish I had the courage to ask if I can sit in his lap, but I chicken out. Girlfriend? Detective Adams pushes. Even someone a few years ago, people can hold grudges. No one. I tuck my hair behind my ear. Could I look more pathetic? I wonder what Shy thinks about my lack of dating life. I don't really date unless you count over the summer when my mom tricked Justin Moore and me into sitting next to each other at a dinner party. I honestly don't think it even counts as a date. I should have known my mom was up to something. 
Why else would she have pushed so hard for me to go to some stupid dinner party with her and dad? They never really take me to any of their events, not that I cared to go. I'm getting closer to graduating college, and now she's been setting her sights on who I'm going to marry. Shy pops out of his seat and starts pacing again. How did the date go? Shy asks before Adams can fire another question at me. Justin and I laughed about it, I shrug. He's nice and all, but neither of us are interested. He's a player, I shrug. Our parents think it went well, so it got them to leave me alone. I wasn't in the same grade as Justin in Bradford Prep, but I was friends with his stepsister. He's a few grades ahead of me, but going to the same school is about all we had in common. He didn't want more? Shy gives me a skeptical look. Has he taken over the questioning now or something? Justin was Mr. Popular in high school. I think he only remembered who I was because his sister and I had a few sleepovers as kids. I was never in the cool clique. No, I snort a laugh. He wanted his parents off his back. What about you two? Adams asks, his eyes bouncing between Shy and me. Are you two dating? Us? No, I squeak. Why is my voice so high right now? Are you sure about that? He asks again. What is it with asking me the same crap over and over? I look at Shy and wait for him to tell the detective no. Not yet. He folds his arms over his chest. The act makes him look even bigger than he already is, and I stare at Shy in shock. What does that mean? I was in class. There are a hundred other people that will vouch for that. He goes on directing his attention to Adams now. All right, I'll be in touch. Adams hands me his card. If anything else comes to mind, let me know. Right then, my phone starts to go off, making my stomach drop. Oh gosh, the calls and texts. I'm so stupid. How could I have forgotten that? Once the detective got here and started peppering me with questions about my past and enemies, I became overwhelmed. My mind was all over the place, and still is. It doesn't help that Shy is near me. I'm always a babbling dork when he's around. Calls and texts? Both Shy and Adams ask at the same time, as Shy goes for my phone in my bag. He pulls it out and answers it like it's his phone. He quickly puts it on speaker and then holds it out in front of me. Hello? I answer. You've learned to answer your phone when I call. Good girl. A deep, distorted voice responds through the phone, and I wrap my arms around myself. Who the fuck is this? Shy booms, making me jump. The line goes quiet before the normal heavy breathing comes through. Listen, you motherfucker. Before Shy can finish ripping into the person, the call ends. They've never spoken before. I can't keep the quiver out of my voice. Give me your code, Shy demands as he comes around the coffee table and holds out my phone to me. I enter in the four-digit password and unlock it fully for him. When did these calls and texts start? Adams asks. I give him a short rundown on how they began when classes started back and how they have escalated. This has been going on for a few months and you've said nothing? Shy asks, his voice low and rough. He's beyond pissed. I nod, suddenly feeling so stupid for not saying anything to anyone. I'm used to handling things myself, for the most part. When I do reach out for help, it's to my father's assistant. She handles most things when it comes to me. I thought it would stop and that the person would get bored. You think it could be the same person who did this to my place? Of course it is. Who else could it be? Shy's body tenses next to mine when he sees the text. He hands my phone over to Detective Adams. The next thing I know, he's pulling me into his lap again, and I let out a calming breath. I'm sorry I shouted, baby, he whispers into my ear. I'm going to get this figured out. Baby? What is happening here? The room grows quiet as Adams scrolls through my phone for a few minutes. Settling against Shy, I feel his fingers slip under the bottom of my shirt as he absently slides them back and forth across my bare skin. How is it I'm getting turned on right now? This is so not the time. 
Is there anything else you're forgetting? Adams asks. No, I swear. That's it. All right, then. You've got my card and we'll be in touch. I'll show you out, Rory says as he comes out of the kitchen, reminding me of all the people in here. I turn my head to see Celeste, Apollo, and Anna, Rory's wife, who is also Celeste's mom, looming around the kitchen. All of them are staring at Shy and me. I try to wiggle out of his lap, but his arm tightens around me. He's silently letting me know I'm not going anywhere. In all honesty, I don't want to be anywhere else. Chapter 4 Shy It's getting late, Rory says after he stands from his chair and nods to everyone else. Let's let Carrie and Shy get some rest. Carrie, you're more than welcome to stay at our place. Celeste, let's get home so we can watch that show you like. Apollo interrupts his fiance and then turns back to me and winks. What show? She asks, but Apollo is already nudging her into the hallway. Good night, I say to everyone before locking the door behind him. Letting out a long sigh, I turn around and face the room. Carrie is still curled up on the couch, and she smiles softly at me as I walk over and take a seat next to her. Are you tired? I pull her feet out from under her and onto my lap. Not really. She lets out a little moan when I begin to massage her toes and then her arches. I'm sure the adrenaline crash hasn't hit yet. Maybe, but I'm not sure I could shut my brain down right now, even if I tried. When my eyes meet hers, I nod in understanding. How about a distraction? I offer, and her smile grows. That sounds like a great idea. Do you want to watch a movie or something? I shake my head as I stand up and hold out my hand for her. A bath would work better. Oh. She makes a little squeak in her throat as she slowly reaches out and puts her hand in mine. I'll get the water started. When we go into my bedroom, I glance around and make sure it's still like I left it this morning. Bed made, clothes put away, no lube on the nightstand, thank God. Take a seat. I nod toward my bed, and she looks at me shyly as she sits down on it. Seeing her in here is almost too much, and I have to look away. Instead of thinking about crawling on top of her, I focus on the task at hand. Walking into the bathroom, I turn on the water in the antique clawfoot tub. I haven't used it much, maybe only a handful of times. But when I moved in, Anna gave me a basket with all kinds of soaps and oils for it. Looking through them, I choose the one that says it's for relaxation. When I pour in the lavender, immediately bubbles begin to form. Once I've placed towels on the small table next to the tub, I step out and nod to Carrie. I think it's ready. You can change in there if you want, and I'll find something for you to sleep in. That's really sweet. She tucks her chin as she goes into the bathroom, but I don't miss the blush on her cheeks. After a few moments, I hear her get into the tub, and I go in search of some clothes. Pulling out one of my old swim team shirts, I make sure it smells clean, and then grab a pair of shorts that tie at the waist. They will be huge on her, but at least she won't have to sleep naked. I close my eyes tight. The thought of her naked in my bed makes my cock ache. Every time she touches me or moves in my lap, it's all I can do not to groan with need. But I keep telling myself that I can't touch her. Not right now. She's been through something awful, and I need to give her some space. I hear something and open my eyes, searching for the sound. When it happens again, I go over to the bathroom door and listen closely. Carrie lets out a sound that can only be her crying. Carrie? I knock on the door gently, but it takes her a second to respond. I'm okay, she says softly, but I can tell by the sound of her voice she's trying to pretend she's fine. I'm coming in, I say, not really thinking through what I'm about to do, but knowing that I have to do something. When I open the door, I see her sitting in the tub with her knees pulled close to her chest and bubbles all around her. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm crying. She wipes away her tears, and I'm in motion. Grabbing the stool from next to the tub, I sit down and grab a washcloth and some of the body wash. You're crying because you went through something scary, 
and now that the adrenaline is wearing off, you're going to crash. Dipping the cloth in the hot water, I bring it up and rub it across her smooth back. It's okay to cry. She lets out a small laugh as she wipes away her tears. How is it that I feel better the moment I'm with you? Because this is where you're supposed to be. The words are out of my mouth before I can think them through. But they're the truth. There's nowhere else she belongs but by my side. Shy. She turns her body so that she can face me. I've thought for a long time I wasn't good enough to have you. I shake my head. But in truth, it was easier to think that than to think of you not wanting to be with me. How could you possibly think that? Leaning forward, I cup her cheek, and she closes her eyes at my touch. My whole life, no one has wanted me. When her eyes open and they meet mine, I can't help but confess what's in my heart. But I'm tired of missing out on things because I was afraid to take what I wanted. And what do you want? She swallows hard, and then her lips part. I think you know exactly what I'm after. Without hesitating, I lean down and press my lips to hers. Chapter 5 Carrie I wrap my arms around Shy and kiss him right back. How many times have I wondered what it would be like if he kissed me? Shy can be so hard to read at times that it's made my fantasies all over the place about him. But mostly that he'd take what he wanted, leaving his mark behind. God knows he's left his mark on me already without so much as a kiss. I dreamed he'd be sweet and soft, taking his time, and his mouth would explore every inch of my skin until I begged for him to take me. That he would touch parts of me that I didn't know existed until he was there. I think he has so many sides to him, and I want them all. With how today has been, I find myself clinging to him, wanting everything right now. When his tongue swipes across the seam of my lips, I part them for him. The second I do, he wastes no time deepening the kiss. I don't either, as I meet his tongue with mine and moan into his mouth. He gives me what I'm silently asking for as he makes the kiss gentle but claiming. Muscles strain under my fingers, and I know he's fighting for control, and it's hard to believe that I'm doing this to him. Carrie, he groans against my mouth. I dig my fingers into his shirt, scared he's about to pull away. He almost does, but changes his mind. Fuck it, is all he says, before his mouth is back on mine again this time so much wilder than before. The kiss is different, and I want to call it needy because that's all I can feel right now. There's so much pent up inside me that needs to be released. It's been trapped away for far too long, and my body is desperate. Don't stop, I beg. Shy and his kiss are the only things keeping me together right now. Everything else is forgotten when his mouth is on mine, and it's only the two of us on this earth. When I try to pull him closer, his fingers grip my back, and I suddenly remember I'm still in his bathtub, completely naked. Enough of this, he tells me, and for half a second I think he's going to stop, but instead he pulls me right out of the tub. Water sloshes over the sides and all over him as I wrap my legs around his waist and he carries me out of the bathroom. When he lays me down on the bed, I arch against it. I'm wet, I say, not wanting to drench his sheets. Well, that's the point. A bubble of laughter escapes from me as his big body comes over the top of mine. I imagined you moaning when you were under me, but I'll take laughing too as long as you're not crying. Then make me moan. I have no idea where this courage comes from, but shy makes me feel powerful. I've been afraid to go for what I've wanted since the moment I met him. Shy's also had some crazy reason he's been holding back with me as well. Now that I know that he's wanted me all this time, I'm going with it. In the morning, my insecurities might come back, but shy will know I want him. 
There is no going back, kitten. I tried to stay away, but it's clear you need someone to take care of you. Others might find his words condescending or rude. I'm an adult, and I should tell him I can take care of myself. But I love his words. If I wasn't so turned on, I'd probably burst into tears. I've been taken care of monetarily by my parents, but never really more than that. Even during my childhood, most of the care was done by the live-in nanny they paid for. I don't want to go back, I admit. Something flashes in Shy's eyes, and I know my words have sealed my fate. I belong to him now. Shy's mouth comes back down onto mine, devouring me. He breaks the kiss when I tug on his shirt, letting him know I want it off. I need his skin pressed against me. He lifts up onto his knees between my legs, giving me what I want and taking it off. When he tosses it away, I stare up at his bare chest. Wow, I breathe as my fingers trace the lines on his abs. All eight of them. Shy's always been in great shape. He got a full ride to college for swimming and is captain of the team. He has no clue that I go to all his meets and even flew out to watch him take home the championship last year. I know what he looks like without a shirt on, but being this close is different. I hate the sudden insecurity that hits me. This is from years of working out and swimming, kitten. Your natural beauty is perfection. His eyes eat me up, and a slow smile pulls at his lips. They're the slightest bit swollen from kissing, but it only makes him hotter. And it's all mine. Any insecurity I might have felt quickly fizzles away. It's not only his words, but the way he looks at me. He truly believes that I'm the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. And you're mine? All mine? I let my legs fall open, and the hand he has on my thigh tightens. He reaches between us to cup my sex, and with his big hand covering all of me, I know he can feel just how drenched I am. You're the only person to ever own any part of me, Carrie. I'm more than yours. There's not an option of going back from this. Understanding hits me hard, and I wonder how I never realized it before. I sit up and press my body to his, desperate for the space between us to be gone. We've both been so alone in this world, but now we don't have to be. Not anymore. Welcome back. Hi. So, so don't forget that you guys can pick up the rest of the people in the story that you have mm -hmm. met that are trickled in together in the um the Craven Cove. Yeah, the Craven Cove. Cove series. Yeah, it should be all bundled up together now. And I'll so. have it link everything linked that we've talked about here today in the show notes for you guys. And don't yeah. forget our bride series is out, our bride and groom series is yes. out that you guys can click. So I'll link mm -hmm. those as well to see whatever's out by the time this releases. Yep. Sounds Anything great. Else? I think that's it. I'll tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance.